Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Ooh, today we're talking about a hot topic. It's not even a hot topic. We're talking about something that is so commonly talked about that I don't know if everyone knows what it is, so we're gonna talk about it. So we are covering the stages of Subarus. We hear this so commonly talked about. You could probably go to your local Starbucks and you'll hear someone talking about the stage of a Subaru. Now we're gonna be talking about stage one, stage two, and stage three. Uh, we're gonna talk about how much each stage costs, what the parts are for each stage, what the expected horsepower output is, that's wheel horsepower, not crank. All the good stuff with it. But before we jump too much into that, I threw up on my Instagram, uh, if you guys follow the Instagram, um, normally I post channel updates there before they come to the channel, um, but I threw out a poll, so we're gonna be moving to three videos a week instead of two. Oh, I'm excited. So the new upload schedule I'm thinking is going to be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, I think it's a good upload schedule for those. But Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, it's gonna be one install, one discussion, debate, topic. We're still keeping both of those because those are both hot things. We like those. The channel was founded on those, we're gonna keep them. But we're also going to be incorporating in a, what, what do you call it? Like a, like a five minute part review. So it's gonna be parts that I've installed in my car. I've had on there for months and uh, reviewing them just so you guys can kind of get a feel for if you want that part or not. So it's not just showing you how to, you guys how to install them, but actually if I think the part is worth the cost or not. And uh, if, you, if it is, then maybe you should get a different brand or stick with that brand. So we're just gonna be talking about options with those. And then the second one that we're gonna be splicing in there is people wanted some vlogs on the channel. So I think we're gonna incorporate some of those in. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what they'll consist of yet, but it will be some hot stuff. Anyways, let's jump into these stages of a Subaru and just uh, what all do they do? For the first stage, stage one, ooh, what does stage one consist of? You're looking at an intake and a uh, access port. Now this is the factory intake that comes out of the car. Uh, it's pretty big, bulky, you got the nice looking milk jug on the bottom of it. Uh, replaces this guy, uh, which we don't like. Don't like him. Now what is the cost for stage one? Ooh, you might be wondering. It's about $980 to be honest. Um, these prices are through Cobb's website because uh, this is kind of where I pulled some of this information. However, $980 is gonna take care of that access port. It's gonna take care of that Cobb SF intake. And it's also going to take care of that Cobb SF intake box. Now, something that I do wanna disclose to you. Why, why do we always do this? Hold up. Let me... Now, something that I want to disclose to you guys is I always suggest getting a Pro Tune over these OTS tunes, but if you are gonna run an OTS tune from Cobb, please make sure that you are running the associated Cobb parts with these tunes. Um, you can mix and match parts, but make sure you are just getting tuned properly so you're not uh, not making anything bad. No bad, no bad things, no bad things in there. We don't want that. So anyways, like I was saying, it's going to consist of that intake, that intake box, and that access port. Now, the expected power levels for stage one on a 2015 plus WRX, that's the FA model, you're gonna be looking at about 255 wheel horsepower and about 270 wheel torque. Now, for the STI model, you're gonna be looking at about 250 wheel horsepower and about 265 wheel torque. Uh, nothing too big gains wise on the STI, but the WRX does get a nice bump. It also gets rid of that rev hang. I took a couple averages from uh, Cobb and a couple other places who have ran dyno tunes on just their stage one maps and kind of averaged these out. So these are just the average horsepower numbers and wheel torque that we're gonna be seeing throughout these. Keep in mind that as you uh, tune your own car, every car is gonna be different when it goes on the dyno or just tuning wise. So just keep that in mind so none of these numbers are 100% what you will get, but it's gonna be around what you're gonna be expecting. Now, what exactly does the stage one tune do? We're gonna start with the WRX. So overall, the WRX naturally has a rev hang from Subaru. If you have a, just a factory 2015 plus WRX, well actually factory up to 2019, because in 2020, they updated that ECU to get rid of that, interestingly enough. Well, thank you for that Subaru, only took you five years. But anyways, so naturally you're gonna have that rev hang. Now, once you upload that stage one OTS map onto the car, you're gonna notice that rev hang is gone and your torque is now even split throughout the power band and it's no longer all down on the bottom end. This can make for more predictable and fun driving so that way you're not just getting a surge of boost every time you step on that pedal. 
Now for the STI, this has been an issue for a couple of years. Now when you throw on that stage one tune, your car is gonna be running a little more rich in a good way. The OEM tune from Subaru does run a little bit lean. I mean, it's nothing too crazy that's gonna damage the car if you decide to keep on that OEM tune for a long period of time. Just keep in mind that when Subaru is manufacturing these cars, they have to meet EPA and federal regulations for what their cars need to put out emission wise. So they make it a little, it runs a little bit lean just to kind of meet some of those standards as well as the probably some other factors that I don't want to get too deep into the weeds with on this one. But that OEM or that OTS stage one tune will richen up the car a little bit. It'll make it a little more reliable for that driving. Now, like I said, OTS tunes are okay if you are running the correct parts associated with that tune, but keep in mind that Pro Tunes will always be better than an OTS tune. Hell, even get a even get an e-tune. A lot there's a lot of good e-tuners out there who can provide some valuable insight with these. Ooh, but that's gonna cover stage one, so let's jump into stage two and uh, talk about what comes with that expected horsepower levels and the cost for it. So now we are up to the stage two level for both of these cars. Now a stage two is going to end up consisting of a turbo back exhaust. So that's gonna end up being your downpipe or J pipe, as well as just a cap back. Now the price on this can vary depending on what you get. I would suggest if you are going to be running an OTS map, you get a catted downpipe. If you're getting pro tuned, then hey, if you want a catless one, throw it on there, but just keep in mind, you'll get boost creep in some of that colder weather, but that's, we're not gonna get into that one. So stage two, downpipe and a cap back. Now, this is gonna end up being like a factory Subaru catback. As you can see, like it's massive and you got a nice little resonator in there, but overall it's gonna, an aftermarket catback is pretty much gonna be the same thing as this, uh, but probably three inch instead of two. So with that, the expected power levels that you'll probably end up seeing from a stage two for the WRX, you're gonna be looking at about 315 wheel horsepower and about 330 wheel torque. For the STI, you're gonna be looking at about 285 horsepower and about 285 wheel torque on that one. Now, the reason you start to get a variance between the WRX, the FA, and the STI at this point is because the WRX is gonna, is, it isn't gonna, it is direct injection. So the reason the direct injection kind of makes a little more horsepower here is because instead of cooling, it, it cools the air inside of the cylinder rather than before. So because of that, your car can pull more timing and make more boost. So generally this is where you're gonna start to see that divergence between the WRX and the STI is that stage two concept. But the stage two STI is so much fun to play with. Ooh, I've never personally owned a stage two WRX, so I can't vouch for it too much. But if you guys have one, from what I hear, they're fun. They're responsive, they're loud. It's fun, it's a fun car. But the stage two STI just at 285 wheel horsepower, I can vouch for it, is very fun to drive. You get a decent bump in power. So you're gonna notice this bump a lot more than you would over that stage one. Now these numbers are gonna be similar to the 2014 and prior WRX, depending on what engine you have in them. I would subtract maybe 15 to 20 wheel horsepower-ish torque off of that for the WRX versus the STI. Now I preach this a lot in a lot of my videos, but I do wanna make sure that it is clearly understood. Cobb tuning does not support a factory STI stage two OTS plus map. An OTS plus map on the older generations cons consists of running a downpipe and an intake together. Now, remember on these 2015 plus STIs, you cannot run an intake and a downpipe on an OTS map from Cobb. The factory fueling in the car just doesn't hold up to it. Ask me how I know, I found out the hard way a couple months back. So on all my previous generation STIs, there was always that, that stage two plus map, which consisted of that downpipe and that intake combo. Just on these cars, supposedly the tuner I talked to at Cobb said that they make a little more horsepower, so the injectors and the fuel pump just can't keep up with a downpipe and an intake. Uh, when I did this on my car, I noticed a lot of feedback knock, my dam was dropping, and I kept throwing codes for lean efficiency. So if you go back to some of my videos I posted in August of last year, you'll see us uh, installing those injectors, uh, fuel pressure regulators, uh, the front mount, and all that good fueling stuff that supported that downpipe intake combo. But that's gonna wrap up stage two. We're gonna jump over to stage three now, which actually consists of some fuel modification. It's actually all fuel modifications. So 
let's go. Stage three is gonna be one that you probably don't hear of too often because I don't think a lot of people refer to these cars in the stage three method, but there is actually a stage three. So stage three is gonna end up consisting of injectors, fuel pump, fuel rails, fuel lines, a turbo inlet, the fuel pressure regulator, and the fuel pump. I don't know if I said that one already. If I did scratch that second fuel pump, if I didn't, then only one. We're only running one fuel pump. But the estimated cost just from Cobb based on all this is gonna run you about $2,100 for all these fuel mods. Now, sometimes if you are in an area that has access to ethanol, that stage three can include that E85 sensor and kit to be able to get you on ethanol. Now for me, I have zero ethanol stations anywhere around me. There's one probably about an hour north and another one about 35 minutes south, but it's just not worth it for me to travel that far for fuel. It's just, it doesn't make sense. But anyways, so the expected power that you can see from a stage three is ultimately gonna vary depending on your fuel, uh, your tuner, your location, altitude will play into effect and all these other variables. So I can't really give you guys a predictable answer for stage three. Uh, my car is actually fairly close to that on pump 92 gas and it makes about, or it makes 330 wheel horsepower and 345 foot pounds of torque. So I would estimate that you can see something in that range. Granted, I don't have the fuel rails or the fuel lines um, or the turbo inlet, but I do have the front mount, which might compensate for uh, some of the lack of horsepower from the other mods. But this is a great benefit to get these fueling mods done because it really helps your car in making that higher horsepower if you are if, I mean, if that is what you want, or just above 300 wheel horsepower, you're gonna need to do these fuel mods. For the WRX, it is gonna be a little bit different because it is direct injection. So the injector portion of it, I don't stress. Just don't stress about it. And with that WRX, you also have, you have two fuel pumps. So you have that standard fuel pump that's in the fuel pink fuel tank pumping fuel up towards the engine. And then you also have that high pressure fuel pump, which helps atomize that fuel into the cylinders. So that way you can get that just nice combustion from the direct injection. So like I said, that is going to vary just based off of fuel location tuner and modifications done to the car. But aside from just stage one, stage two and stage three, that's all you're really looking at for stages on these cars. I know they're referred to quite often and generally in the comments section, I see people asking what is stage one or stage two is on non Facebook, not on here. You guys have been, you guys are outstanding with your Subaru knowledge, but just to clear up the air a little bit on those stages, but that's going to wrap up just kind of the stage breakdown of these cars. Um, I didn't think this video would be too long and I didn't want to drag it out too far, but I did want to get that information out there for those of you that don't do it, don't know it, or are new to the Subaru community. Um, stages I've never really heard referred to in any other car community that I've been in, um, both with my 350Z, my Skyline, even the, the BRZ FRSs, I don't think I've ever heard of stages being referred to in them. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure why. I'm not quite sure why the Subaru community is the only one with stages. Uh, but as an added bonus, there is an extra stage that Cobb offers for drivetrain things, which is a full drivetrain kit. Um, it comes with the short shifter, the bushings, and I believe a, short, a shift knob from them. So that, I, that's a stage one drivetrain. I've never heard of a stage two or anything like that, but interestingly enough, that's what it is. But anyways, let's get this camera put back up on the bench. We'll wrap this video up. Ooh, and uh, close it out. Uh, so there you have it, everyone. We talked about cat back, turbo back, downpipe combos. We talked about your good old intakes. Oh no, I just broke my stock intake. I don't think it'll, I'm never gonna use it again. And we also talked about some of those good old injectors for those fueling mods in there. Ooh, ooh. Hopefully the information in this video has helped you out Ooh, or if not, maybe you're bored at work, you're, you're doing something, maybe you're at home, you got nothing better to do, so you're just sitting here watching me walk around the garage and talk a little bit. <sighs> what a day. What a day. But anyways, I am so excited to have you guys here on the channel with me. I'm super pumped to get three videos out per week. If you guys have any suggestions on anything that you want to see, whether it's a five minute part reviews or some vlog ideas, please feel free to drop them in the comments. If you have anything else you want to say about these stages, Drop them down there, drop them in the comments. Um, this is getting out of hand and weird, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Oh, so if this video helped you, go ahead, hit that little thumbs up, turn that little thumbs up. Ooh, 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 and if you are not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, ooh, 
this corner right down here to my right your left the left side of the screen go ahead smash that little thing and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies Woo!